seeing just Oh shit, flame trooper, flame trooper, flame, flame guy, flame guy, flaming, flamer, flame guy. Come on, come on, come on, come through the door. Stop shooting fire. Come on, go through the door. Door, walk through it, go. It's a door, it's used for the transversal through walls. Let's go, come on, use it. Do it, faggot, do it, do it. Do it. Fucking shit, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come, come and get me, come and get me. Ah, oh, shit, I don't want to waste the fucking time. Oh, there he is, fuck, there he is. And, okay. Well, alright. Shut the fuck up, Dice. That was not an accident. I meant to do that. That was design. Salutations, my Fallout lovers. I used to be a Fallout lover, but I'm not really a Fallout lover anymore. Hmm. I wonder why. It is Maddie here today, and I wanted to discuss with all of you a topic that's been in the back of my head for a while now that I just want to get out there. Why is Fallout 4 so incredibly disappointing? And ask... What is with people loving hating Fallout 4? Eh, sort of a malformed question, I think. I bet most people don't love to hate the game. Most people would obviously rather this game be fantastic. Nobody likes dropping 60 bucks plus on a game and then having it suck. And I don't think it's because people love to hate the game. I think a lot of people got the game, were incredibly disappointed by it, and were very glad to find that they weren't the only one who thought that. They reveled in the idea of this communal disappointment by what should have been a dub best game ever. Now, I'm saying this from the perspective of someone who, when the game launched, I was like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. First off, what the hell is happening to your frame rate? Dear God. Second, of course you said that. Of course you did. You have a Bethesda-based channel. Of course you're going to say that. Then it was exposed for its flaws, and I said, you know what, I still really love this game, but it's clearly flawed. But it's been over a year now since the game launched, and there seems to be this hyper-focus still on emphasizing the fact that Fallout 4 was a disappointment, Fallout 4 was the worst game to ever come out, Fallout 4 sucks, and so on. And to me, I wonder why people feel the need to constantly harp on that. This really? It's a mystery to you. I don't buy that for a New York minute. People are often harshest in terms of criticism on the games that they are disappointed by. Take a game like Ride to Hell Retribution, regarded by the human race as the worst game ever made. Nobody cared about this game. Nobody was excited for it. Nobody was invested in it. Nobody cared. It was just some game, and it was really bad, and we loved how bad it was because it was so bad, and everyone loves Angry Joe when he's on his little rant. But we didn't have any connection to Ride to Hell Retribution, which made it so easy for us to almost callously make fun of it. But maybe let's look at another game that we can use as an example, by the same company, of the same style, with many of the same issues. A game like, uh, Skyrim. The Elder Scrolls VI Skyrim. When Elder Scrolls VI Skyrim came out, it was the god of video games. People adored it. It was on everyone's mind. The memes were just, they were everywhere. My god, the memes. My god, the memes. I used to something, something, something. Then I took an arrow to the knee, guys, because that's the thing he says in that game, because I... Okay, that joke's old now. Like Fallout 3, New Vegas, Skyrim, Oblivion. Look, it's the same deal, and it happens over and over and over again. It happens with a lot of games. Bethesda just happens to make a lot of them where the point hits. You start off on this really high point where it's new and flashy, and then as the game gets older and you get more used to it, as the shiny new toy feeling fades away, you start to recognize the issues with the game, for which, let's be frank, Skyrim has a shit ton of. I still haven't beaten it. I don't really have any desire to go and beat it. I'm pretty close, I think, I just don't give a damn. Now let's look at a game like Fallout 4, which suffered, and is suffering now. Fallout 4? It's in that dark night of the soul kind of area here. We're no longer traipsing through the wilderness in a flashy new game, gaping in amazement like a hun at the gates of Rome. After the shiny new game appeal wears off, we start looking for all the things we were promised, all the things we were led to believe. Because once again, we were promised so, so much by, well, including but not limited to Bethesda's very own Todd Howard, the every mountain can be climbed guy. I mean, the fact that he tells untruths or exaggerates them to where they're practically untrue is legendary. There are even Nexus mods for Skyrim called Todd Howard in the Book of Lies, and there's also a Fallout 4 version called Todd Howard in the Forgotten Lies. For me, Fallout 4 was starting at a point where I thought it would be amazing, and then noticing it wasn't really that amazing, and then kind of being like, oh, well, it's not terrible, and then proceeding from there. 
People are very harsh on Fallout 4, and rightfully so, because they love the game. Because the Bethesda games give them amazing experiences. They feel connected. It's almost personal in a way. And when people are disappointed by games that they think are going to be amazing or that they feel so connected to, it's more important than when a crappy game comes out that they don't care about. This is not a video designed to help defend Fallout 4. Yes, it is, Matt. Let's come on. That's exactly what this video is. It's more so me asking, why are people obsessed with hating games? For me, I'd rather divert my attention personally to games I love, to games I enjoy. Maybe instead of saying, Fallout 4 is the worst game ever, it was a disappointment. You say yourself you'd rather divert your attention to games that you love. You kind of answer your own question and you don't give it any second thought. Fallout is a series that people love. Elder Scrolls, it's a series that people love. And like I said, we've reached the point where it's a year after release that all the flaws and the problems with these games can finally be seen. And they're out in the open because we're no longer, you know, thrilled at this shiny new game kind of appeal that video games tend to have because they're an experience. Fallout 4 was supposed to be that thing and it really wasn't that thing. It was worse. It was a disappointment. It didn't represent a leap forward for the series. It was at best... Right? At best, Fallout 4 was a sidestep from New Vegas. And I think a lot of people who played both do not consider Fallout 4 the superior. I certainly do not. Is Fallout 4 bad? No, absolutely. It's not a bad game, I don't think. But when you consider that New Vegas came out in 2010 and New Vegas came out in 2015, you ask yourself, well, apart from the graphics and how it looks, where exactly is the five years worth of improvement? Because a lot of us couldn't find it. It sucked, no role-playing, yada, yada, yada. How you kind of gloss over it when you say it doesn't have enough RPG elements, but really, that's something that crucifies this game for a lot of people. It's kind of what killed it for me. It's why one of the most apt descriptions of Fallout 4 is it's an ocean of content with the depth of a mud puddle. Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas were very capable role-playing games, RPGs, in the general sense, the colloquial sense. Fallout 4 was not really that. It was dumbed down. It was definitely simplified. And it didn't need to be. It didn't step forward. It stepped back. How about putting out some ideas on how to improve the title instead of just abruptly bashing it in an unintelligent way? Yeah, this is the kind of shit that makes me think that you are using this video to defend Fallout 4 from criticism in this weird, blanket sort of way. If I play a shooter game and there's a weapon that's overpowered, that doesn't mean I'm obligated in the same comment to think about what changes need to be made to it. Does it need to have reload adjusted, magazine adjusted, minimum, maximum damage, uh, drop off, a bullet speed, total this, that, and the other thing, iron sight variability, it's, come on. This can be complex stuff, but it's easy to point out that there's a flaw in the game. If someone says this game is boring, they're not obligated to say, well, what things would make it exciting? Because really what you're asking people at that point is, oh, you have a problem with the game? Well, okay, now you make one. Go. And it should be kind of obvious when people say the RPG elements were dumbed down. There are literally things that were in New Vegas that do not exist at all in Fallout 4. Implying that it is unintelligent of people to say that the RPG elements of Fallout 4 were dumbed down without on the spot presenting ways to make it better and rpg elements in a game again that's game design which game companies fuck up all the time it's not simple it's not easy well to call those people unintelligent that's asinine and it makes you look like an asshole it's become commonplace while scrolling through my comments where each day i see intelligent discussion or people who just despise fallout 4 and watch my videos to tell me how much they hate fallout 4 and well it makes sense to tell you you're the bethesda channel don't you think the Model 10A Hunter in Battlefield 1 is OP as fuck, but it's not going to do much good if I go and tell C-Nanners about it. And I'm like, is this me? I'll go to other Bethesda YouTubers, and people will be engaged in this never-ending discussion on if Fallout 4 was a shit game or not. And it feels like anyone who likes Fallout 4 has to explain themselves now. And Well, they don't have to, of course. This is the internet. You can literally just, just walk away from it. But when people tell me that they loved Fallout 4, I legitimately am curious as to what they loved about Fallout 4 because it does nothing really all that well. I mean, art design and the Commonwealth, sure. But that goes back to ocean of content, depth of a mud puddle. 
I'm legitimately curious why some people are in love with this game. Because I don't see it. I love The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. It's like my favorite game ever. So when someone says that they hate it to me, I want to know why. Why do they hate it and I love it? And this brings back an interesting loop that I think a lot of people can relate to is if you were one of the people who originally loved Fallout New Vegas before Fallout 4 came out. You know exactly who you are out there. The people who would combat between Obsidian and Bethesda, people would say, oh, Bethesda's the best. And if you like New Vegas, you were a sinner. And guess what? Now it's vice versa. And we have people who need to love New Vegas because that is the definitive Fallout game. And if you like Fallout 4, you don't know what's good for the series. I have no interest in these little squabbles be the real or imagined, and I have a tendency that you're blowing it far out of proportion because it's what helps you make Fallout 4 look good, which I believe is ultimately the purpose of this video. Claims that are asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. New Vegas took something that Fallout 3 was and improved on it in most aspects. But what did Skyrim improve on from Morrowind? Sorry, Oblivion. What did Oblivion get better than Morrowind, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, we see this trend of the game is getting simpler and simpler and simpler, more and more and more shallow, and people like me who love these open-world RPG games, if you can call Fallout 4 even an RPG at all at this point, we're worried. We're worried at the direction the series is going. Because a lot of these, for one thing, they're design decisions. These are not technical limitations. Bethesda is going out of their way, especially with Fallout 4, they just went out of their way to make design decisions that were dumb and were overly simplistic and made the game basically Call of Duty with an inventory and a quest system. And a Fallout can of paint. Which was the best thing about Fallout 4, by the way, was the can of paint. The most fun I had in Fallout 4 was looking at all the things and not doing the things. And since it's a game, I should have way more fun doing things than looking at things. I mean, if not, they're just making a movie. I personally think that stance is unfair as each Fallout game expresses a different strength in the franchise and I'm not going to get into that discussion today because what we are- No, no, no. I'm not letting that slide. Bullshit. What is the strength of Fallout 4? In Fallout 4, what is the strength of the franchise in Fallout 4? Really? Tell me. I, I, I'm legitimately in, in the comments, alright? If you're going to leave a comment that doesn't concern my genitals, then go and leave a comment telling me what you think that is, because I have no idea what it is. What is the strength of Fallout 4 in the franchise? And before you say, oh, it's the graphics, well, then you're going to say that about the next Fallout and the next Fallout. Every new Fallout is going to be graphics, because it's been five years since the last Fallout. The graphics better damn well be the best. It's why people just can't accept that I didn't like this game. All right, that's it. Move on. There's been tons of games, we're all gamers here, that we have played and just don't feel the need to harp on, right? So yeah, well, not all games are as popular as the Fallout franchise is, or the Elder Scrolls series is, and Bethesda is inexorably linked to both of those things. Fallout? It's a series that people give a damn about. It's a franchise people love. It's lore that interests people. The same thing happened with Battlefront, for instance, because we love Star Wars so much, and we were so disappointed with how DICE and EA handled the reboot. These are games that are huge and massive in scope and size, for the most part. They're games people are passionate about, which is why we still argue about them today, and because, well, it's a fun discussion to have a lot of the times. So why is Fallout 4 that one exception where each time it's brought up, I gotta be like, yo, you gotta know this, man. This game is bad. Again, it's because people are passionate about the series and about the games that this company makes, and they want their opinions to be heard, and they want to discuss with people the reason for those opinions. That's why if there's a scandal in the NFL, everybody's talking about it. But if there's a scandal in the frickin' Lithuanian curling team, I mean, no one really cares. The other issue I really do have with the negative discussion of Fallout 4 is there's a big difference between saying a game is bad and saying a game is a disappointment. If you had high expectations and the game didn't meet them, part of the blame is going to fall on you, but yes. Well, I mean, yeah, sure, in a way, but when you look at games like, like Fallout 4 and Skyrim, a lot of the blame is to be placed on the people who are the developers of the game who are making the claims about the game. For instance, if you were disappointed in No Man's Sky, that's not your fault. You were explicitly told that things would be in that game, and they simply weren't there. It's not your fault that you were disappointed. It's someone told you a lie. 
someone misrepresented something. And, oddly enough, this applies to Fallout 4 quite a bit, Mr. Howard. Part of the blame falls onto the game for its mechanics that didn't satisfy your urges, but- No, 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 not satisfy my urges. Meet the expectations that were set by the advertisers. If I buy a sports car and it is explicitly advertised by the race car creator that this car will go from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 3.5 seconds and I can never get it to go fast, it only the best it'll do is 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds, it's not my fault for being disappointed. It is the fault of the advertisers for misrepresenting the product. And it'll hurt doubly so if I'm a car enthusiast. See the parallel? A bad game is not Fallout 4. A bad game is Ride to Hell Retribution. A bad game is Rogue Warrior. You know, obligatory bad is subjective here. I mean, I know you're all thinking it, but it has to be said. I had someone in a stream today actually tell me he thought Fallout 4 was shit. Well, I can't blame him. Those are bad video games. Games that don't have good gameplay design. Like Fallout? Horrible stories like Fallout are embarrassing that I played on my channel to laugh at like Fallout Those are bad video games to say Fallout 4 is amidst the category of bad games is Laughable I hope at this point in my channel's life. You know that I'm not making this video just to defend Fallout 4 I Yeah, but let's be honest here That's exactly what this video is for isn't it? You can make a video where you say that calling it a bad game is laughable and then say, I'm not here to defend Fallout 4. You can't do that. That's not how this works. You can't say what you just said and then follow that up with, oh, this isn't a video to defend Fallout 4. It absolutely is. It has been 100% a video to defend Fallout 4. This does not shock me at all from a channel who has Bethesda games as its bread and butter. There's nothing wrong with that, but let's just be honest about what your intentions are. You're here to defend Fallout 4 made various videos defending Bethesda or attacking them on policies that they've brought up. But this is one instance where I'm going to stand there and be like, if you didn't like Fallout 4, that's great. If you like Fallout 4, that's great. But to call it a bad game is honestly disrespectful. What? To call it a bad game is honestly disrespectful. No, I... I must have misheard you. To call it a bad game is honestly disrespectful. To call it a bad game is honestly disrespectful. To call it a bad game is honestly disrespectful. Are you fucking shitting me? Calling Fallout 4 is disrespectful. To who, Bethesda? Or to you? Are they being disrespectful to the developers? Or are they being disrespectful to you when they say it? Do you take offense to that? Is that something that bothers you? I ask the question, I know the answer. You obviously are very bothered that people are saying this about Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is one of the most disappointing and underwhelming games I have ever played. I just got done with a Titanfall 2 campaign, alright? I had more fun in the four hours of the Titanfall 2 single player than I ever had with Fallout 4, okay? I mean, you, you have constantly said in this video, I'm not using this video to defend Fallout 4 or Bethesda. Fuck off. You are absolutely doing that, okay? You cannot say calling a game I like is disrespectful in a video that you claim isn't to defend that game. Maybe some people out there don't instantly recognize the dissonance between these two ideas you're putting forth, but I'm a little smarter than the average bear. I can read you like a fucking book. Let's unpack it, shall we? Let's unpack this. Let's whip this out for everyone to see. Calling a game bad is not disrespectful to anybody. It is you describing a game that you think is bad. You're just butthurt people think it's bad. You've attached yourself to this game. You've given it a, a connection to you that maybe is a little unhealthy. If you're willing to go out and say, if you call it bad, you're being disrespectful. You've leached onto this product, this item, 
so much that you're willing to go out there in front of thousands of people and say that if you think this is bad, you are being disrespectful. It's one thing to say that you're wrong, I guess, but to assume that they're being disrespectful is ridiculous. If someone came up to me and said, The Witcher 3 is a bad game, I wouldn't say that they're being disrespectful, because that would be a dumb thing to say, so it would be contrary to my nature. Have you ever considered that Todd Fallout 3 has 200 endings Howard, maybe hyped them up for something that wasn't real, or told them uh, just disingenuous things? And now they think the game is bad because it didn't meet their expectations. Maybe they legitimately didn't like the way that all the mechanics work together in Fallout 4. Which is not a stretch to say. Because of how, well, the mechanics of Fallout 4 aren't really all that great. Fallout 4 is fantastic to look at. It's not exactly the best thing in the world to play. So when someone says it's a bad game, I mean, it's not a, it's not a long leap from saying that this game which it is more fun for me to be looking at things instead of actually playing, is a bad video game. I mean, that's why I'd say, like, Infinite is, like, a bad video game, because it's boring and dull, and the only thing good about it is the cutscenes and the art. Look, let's... Fuck it. I, let, let's, let's just go. Let's keep going. I'm done with this bit, because that's, that's stupid. There's my video title right there. That's, that's probably what I'm going to call this video, because I, I don't know what I'm going to title these videos until I'm done and it's, like, uploading... Calling Fallout 4 bad is disrespectful. Fuck off, you fanboy. If it didn't strike your fancy, it disappointed you though? Fair enough, man. Good. If it didn't strike your fancy or if it disappointed you, that's fair enough. But if you say it's a bad game, then you're just being disrespectful. Do you listen to yourself? Good on you. Feel free to express those thoughts in a way where Bethesda can learn from their mistakes, not in a way that's just going to make them scratch their head and be like, what's wrong with this dude? Yeah, what's wrong with this guy who didn't like our game? Seriously, Bethesda's not a bunch of retards. A lot of the issues with Fallout 4 are design decisions. They weren't technical limitations or anything like that. You're just getting upset at the people who said the game sucked, or who said they didn't like the game. Bethesda knows exactly what you mean when you say the RPG elements were dumbed down. They know exactly what you mean when you say the AI's bad. Bethesda isn't stupid. Well, though sometimes they make me wonder. As you can tell though, this is a entirely unscripted video where I just- I Bitch, about how people didn't like Fallout. That's what you do in this video. I needed to rant, man. This has just been something I've been bottling up for so long. It's like, I get it. I get it. Fallout 4 wasn't the best game ever, but it's still a good game, a decent game, if anything. Yeah, we know you're upset. We know you're butthurt. We know you're angry. We know that you, as a Bethesda channel, had a Bethesda game release, and it wasn't really all that great. I'll bet you felt some sort of an obligation to love this game and adore it. And I bet it really, really bothers you that so many people don't think it's a decent game at all. You can't make a video saying this totally isn't coming to the defense of Fallout 4 when you say stuff like this has been inside of me for so long I just had to get it out, all these people complaining about Fallout 4. It legitimately bothers you that people don't like your precious Bethesda game. You dislike that so much you're willing to say people who thought it's bad are being disrespectful to your company. And I'm gonna say your company here because I think it's extremely appropriate. What's worse is when you got those people who say, I played Fallout 4 for 200 or so hours, but yeah, that's a pretty disappointing game. I'm like, how do you spend that much time, that's multiple days of your life, in a game that you said you didn't like? It baffles me how you come across as someone who's so foolish to assume that hours played has a direct correlation with the quality of those hours. I have almost 1,100 hours in DayZ, but the quality per hour of those hours compared to Titanfall 2's is not even comparable. I said before Fallout 4 was an ocean of content with the depth of a mud puddle. It took me. Over a hundred hours just to find all the stuff. Just look at all the places. It took me a hundred hours to search out all of the things that I actually did enjoy about Fallout, which is a very short list. The art and the locations were really the only things I enjoyed about Fallout 4, and it takes you a lot of time to visit all those places and squeeze out all the enjoyment you can from the game. Once I'd gone to all the locations I could find, I stopped playing and had no desire to return.
A lot of us spent time in the game looking for what was supposed to be so great, searching high and low and not finding it. And by the time we realized this game wasn't what its potential should have been, when we realized it was truly a disappointment compared to Fallout New Vegas, for instance, all those times, well, the hours had passed. I don't know about you guys, but I'm at that point now where if I'm about 10 hours into a game and it's not hooking me, unless I'm reviewing it and the publisher was generous enough to provide me with a review copy in my situation, I'm not finishing that game. Well, that's you. Applying that to everybody is foolish. Of course, at this point in the video, I've come to expect nothing less of you. Have you ever considered that some people don't get review copies for games and have to spend $60? And for some people, $60 is a lot of money and they want to try to squeeze as much enjoyment as they possibly can out of a game, or at least enough hours spent in the game. And Fallout 4 definitely does offer a lot of time that can be spent looking at things, possibly even doing things, but that doesn't mean just because you've sunk a lot of hours into something means that you had to like it, or enjoy it immensely, or think it's even decent. Almost all of my time in DayZ, for instance, was spent chasing the next thrill, and a lot of the times it would take me hours upon hours upon hours of wandering about and hoping and wishing until I got that 10 minutes or 10 seconds of exhilaration. I know all of you out there have lives, you have important things to do, and I imagine that if you like the game, then you probably would put 200 hours into it. Anyway, I do know a lot of you guys out there share my thoughts on this subject, just a lot of people are afraid to say that because they tend to get attacked for it. Because in 2016, disagreement and criticism is an attack. That said, you'll probably think this video is an attack video. Regardless, I know the conversation will lead to whether or not Fallout 4 is good or bad, but what I want it to be focused on, hopefully, with this video is just the discussion on why people think it's bad, so... No, 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 Maddie. You know as well as I know that this video isn't meant to instigate the discussion of whether or not Fallout 4 is a quality title or not. In your mind, that was settled long, long ago. The point of this video is for you to soapbox in defense of Fallout 4 because, well, if people think it's bad, well, they're just being disrespectful. There is no discussion to be had. You said yourself in this video, there's no possible way anybody could truly think this game is anything less than decent. Let's see where it goes in the comments. I'm looking forward to the interaction. Just don't be disrespectful and say Fallout 4 is bad. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Blah, blah, blah. This is really the first video of his that I've watched, and based on it, I'm really disappointed in the attitude that he has. The attitude he has towards the game, the gamers, people's opinions of it, how disingenuous he is. This kind of, I don't know, the way he talks about it, it's clearly designed to not want to discuss it. I mean, when you say outright that thinking Fallout 4 is a bad game means you're being disrespectful, what is that supposed to say to people? The gamers come first, not the games. And you should certainly treat the people playing the games better than the games themselves.